Oh, there you are. Every time I come to Great Falls, I visit this place where Charlie and I spent nearly 30 years working together to create his legacy of art and stories. As time goes by and the world keeps changing, I, I realize more than ever the importance of this work and, and what it will mean to the future generations. He left us so much. Now I asked Charlie one time if he thought he'd ever run out of ideas for paintings and he said a man couldn't live enough lifetimes to paint all the ideas that he had. And if he lost his hands, he'd learn to paint with his toes. Because he had to paint. Not only what was in his mind, but, but also what was in his heart. Oh, Charlie had a big heart for his work and for Montana. And he painted it across the canvas, as one person put it, such that the viewer could smell the incense of the prairie. The things we love and value, well, it's easy to take them for granted. But they'll always be there, but they need to be appreciated and cared for, or they won't last. Now that Charlie's gone, I'd like to know that not only his art and stories survive, but the bigger picture of who he was, and how he lived, and what Montana and the West meant to him, that that will live on as well. Our home here, and the studio next door, well, they tell Charlie's story better than anyone or anything ever could. When Charlie died in 1926, it was my idea to have the home and studio be a memorial to Charlie, where people could visit and experience how he lived and worked. And that idea led to something greater. The following year, the Russell Memorial Art Exhibit and Sale was held to raise funds to save this site. And since that time, there have been auctions and exhibits, museum editions and programs, all created to honor Western art and the Russell legacy. Charlie was not just a Montana artist. He belonged to the whole country. This site has grown over the years. It's not just a place to visit Charlie's past, but a center for the heart and soul of Western art that he embodied. Here, people can walk in Charlie's shoes. Over 100 years ago, Charlie Russell's brush captured the spirit of the West. An untamed landscape of open prairie, imposing mountains, and endless horizons. And its people whose stories, timeless traditions, and adventurous spirit came to personify the American West. To ensure that this Western spirit moves us today, we ask, what defines us? At the C.M. Russell Museum, we believe that our challenge is to define the West of today, to discover our unified spirit, where our passion and energy are as resolute and independent as those who blaze the trails before us. Our West will be defined by a dedication to timeless virtues that will inspire and endure for generations to come. Inclusion Friendship Authenticity Humor Courage Charlie's art and life celebrated the spirit of these virtues in the face of complexities found in his world. In his work, he enshrined these values, transcending time and challenge. Thanks to him and the artists who have followed, we are reminded that great art reveals our shared beliefs, bridges generations, and builds community. And now, we proudly announce a transformative moment in our history to define our future. Art and Soul, a campaign to ignite the American spirit. Through this effort, the boldest fundraising campaign in our museum's history, we will elevate the art and soul of the American West and forever celebrate the life and work of Charles Marion Russell. Our goal is as grand as our horizons, to establish an endowment that will ensure our financial stability through the good times and the hard, to secure major works of art, and to enhance our visitor experience. With your friendship, the Art and Soul campaign is on the path to reach a new horizon of success. New education programs, a broadened permanent collection, innovative partnerships, robust exhibitions, and an expanded campus will eternalize Charlie's spirit for this generation and those to come. As a friend of America's cowboy artist, we invite you to embark on this journey and complete these major goals. Your spirit is called upon to define the future of the American West, 
Together, we will carve a new trail for the C.M. Russell Museum. Together, we are the art and soul of the American West. Join us and ignite your spirit. One of my favorite parts of being involved with Charlie Russell's life is that I got to set up the exhibitions and plan, plan how the the art would be displayed and, and how people would see the story unfold in such an exhibition. And in the future that's going to take an important uh, role in how this story is preserved. Planning for an exhibition takes a lot of time. So it's really years in the making. First, obviously with Emily as a curator, she is doing research and so she's talking with other curators and experts maybe in that topic or subject matter trying to gain an idea of if, do we need to acquire any loans, if so where are they located, are they available, building relationships um, with other people in the field and, and to really try and feel out if this is an appropriate exhibition in concept, if it is, do we have partners that would support the idea, is it one, promoting our mission, promoting um, and advancing Russell's legacy. And then there, there's that whole idea of are we going to also have a publication accompany it to really expand on that scholarship and have something much more long-lasting than an exhibition that might just be for a three-month period. So essayists and the research that those SAS need to do um, for those publications. This is all very long term, so you know, a publication, two years would be ideal to plan and start putting that together. Um, an exhibition three to five years in advance is kind of the standard. And so to be able to work, have that uh, seed money, if you will, really helps us build the foundation, build up those narratives, have a designer come in and uh, sketch out the concept so that uh, we can have, it's not just art on a wall that we want to do for our exhibitions, but this is an immersive experience. And so to be able to get that high funding um, and those high donors, whether it be grantees or private sources, you know, we need to show them our vision. And so we can show them that we've laid the groundwork for this. We have a checklist, we have a narrative, we've secured partners, we have scholars on board to help us with you know, publication or writing little uh, blurbs for the wall, searching out people to create these digital components that we can have in gallery and on our website, building a digital presence as we all understand how important that is in this day and age. And so to be able to present that to our funders, lay it out, our plan, it just really shows us how polished we are and how much we've really thought about this. We know it's important to our strategic plan, to Russell's legacy, to really building a foundation. And that really helps too, along with our reputation. And you know if you're getting um, a packet from the CM Russell Museum with a proposition to lay out an exhibition, a publication, these types of endeavors that we want to do, that you know it will be well done, it's got a great background, and we've got professional staff that are working on it. You know, Charlie loved telling stories in that log cabin studio. Oh, he had his friends and neighbors would come sometimes. I hope in the future that people still do that. Long after we're gone, people will still see that cabin as a place where people can gather and share their tall tales. Well, the first thing I really liked was prints when I was a little kid. You get to looking at Charlie's paintings and, uh, and a lot of Indians in his paintings, cowboys, Indians, I mean, all of that. I mean, I flipped out over it as a little kid. It would take us, I don't know if we were kindergarten, first grade or whatever, but they marched us all through here. And uh, it was it was just a little cinder block uh, building because Josephine Trigg said she would give that collection to the city if they would, if they would make a place for it and they they had they put up a cinder block little building the cabin was there and you know, we, we went through there and uh, you know as a first grader so I don't know if it's still around they had a rattlesnake skin that was like I don't know ten feet long or something or about this wide or something impressed a kindergartner pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the hands of God touched that guy more than once, I'll tell you what. I, all his all his pictures and his history that he's put out for us to understand. And then beyond all that, here's a guy that can write stuff that's that's 
got great literary pieces out there and uh, not only uh, stories when Pete hits the speed mark <laughs> and uh, also uh, his Christmas poems and his spirit oh. of mankind his spirit and the things that he said will ring true forever and they, they touch both of us absolutely 100 percent 100 percent. he was a i call him a genius not just because of his art his humor his philosophy and like you said what he could write was next to unbelievable in my opinion it's still yeah it still rings true oh all yeah there's open good health to horse undia with a long and an easy ride good water good grass to the top of the pass where the trail crosses the great divide. Hallelujah, Charlie. If anyone knows anything about my role in Charlie's life, it's that I didn't take no for an answer when it came to charging what Charlie's art was worth. In the future, it's going to be very important that someone pays attention not just to what it's worth in a monetary sense, but to the story that it tells. That will be a very important job. Behind me, you can see uh, a very famous painting that hung in the Mint Saloon uh, for half a century. Uh, it's called The Holdup, and it depicts a very true event that happened, one of which Charlie Russell had real knowledge, because it happened in the first year in which he was uh, a 16-year-old arriving in Montana. And 20 years later, he recorded it, almost 20 years later, he recorded it uh, for posterity became the most popular painting in the Mint. And then when it went down to Texas in the museum that it was in down there, the Amon Carter Museum, it was the most popular painting there for a half a century when it hung there. But the opportunity has arrived for us to bring it home, bring a significant stake of ownership and uh, back, to the muse back to the museum and back to Great Falls. Uh, so how was that gonna happen? Well, there's a challenge grant. We had a challenge grant involving a great other Russell painting called Death of a Gambler or The Gunfighters. That painting um, was presented to the museum for a meaningful stake uh, to come back and be available for long-term uh, sharing of its viewership with the museum. And in doing that, uh, there was a requirement to raise a very significant contribution to the endowment. That has been achieved thanks to the generosity of some leading families here in Great Falls and here in Montana. And now we have that, the success of that has now triggered this second offer where uh, the availability for a great stake in this exciting painting uh, can also be achieved. You'll be hearing more about that as we progress in the public phase of the campaign. But I just wanna to convey to you how great it is, I think, that the Art and Soul campaign has become the platform for not just putting us, our museum that we love, uh, on sound financial footing, but also uh, to further enhance the permanent collection of this museum in a way that uh, honors that art legacy of Charles M. Russell. Thank you for your attention today, and uh, please stay tuned for what we do in the exciting public phase of our campaign. We put our time and resources towards the things that matter to us. Things that we feel will make a difference for the future. Because we know if we lose ground, we might not be able to make it up. We have to take care of what we value. And that comes from a deep connection to the story, to, to Charlie, that so many feel when they are visiting here. The West was already changing when Charlie arrived and was going to change irreversibly whether or not he captured it in his art. But he did capture it. And so his story is entwined with the story of the West that has passed. What do we owe the future so that this story won't be lost? Where would we be without these treasures to, to inspire and encourage young artists to believe in their dreams? Economic times rise and fall. And when things are challenging, now that's when we have to remember what's important. For a project like protecting and maintaining Charlie's legacy, this isn't the time to ask how expensive it will be. It's time to ask ourselves, what is it worth? Charlie, well over a hundred years ago now, recorded that 
the settlement of the American West and the values of the American West and what turned out to be, in many cases, the values of America uh, with his paintbrush. He's created his perception of a world that he lived in and you're allowed to be a part of that world. His humility, his care for people, uh, a good mixer in that he was friends with priests, preachers, and sinners. I think of Charlie Russell as a person who went through remarkable self-discovery and then shared it with the rest of us where we can learn more about ourselves, what we think, what we care about, what resonates for us. Russell saw the importance of looking ahead and he saw the importance of how a story can bring people together. There isn't a piece that I don't smell the fire or feel the dust or hear the hoop ups of the people. What Russell did that is uh, and, and reflected in all his great works is to capture the late evening light in Montana. You can go outside and see the same sky and the same landscape and it hasn't gone away. We're still living in it. And so I think he's he's given us that gift of saying, you know, yes, it's it's here today. It can be here tomorrow. Let's appreciate it. His illustrating the history of an era that was coming to a close. For the cowboys, it was the barbed wire. They couldn't open range anymore. And for the Native Americans, it was the reservations, a different type of barbed wire, and they couldn't roam anymore. Everyone looks at a Russell painting, I'm sure, and sees something different in it, and it talks to them. But it's, it's kind of an emotional thing to uh, not only admire the talent that produced it, but the, the subjects that he was painting. In Russell, we have someone who's kind of stood the test of time. He's a hero for us today in the same way that he was a leader and a transformative figure in his day because of the things he thought about, the people that he characterized in his art, the outlook of, that he had on his world that was incredibly unique and radical for his time that in some ways is just as bold today. I just uh, love this museum. I think it's the crown jewel of, of Great Falls. The Russell Museum has meant a lot to us and our family um, over multiple generations. The Russell Museum is the jewel, not only of Great Falls, but of Montana and of the entire Western art world. I just think it's a very, very important part of Great Falls mm -hmm. in the American West. Yeah. The legacy of Charlie Russell and the museum as a whole, I think, is one of the most important aspects of Great Falls. To have a museum in his name, to me, that's his legacy. It's continuing on the lessons and the life that he experienced and learned. Charlie's legacy in the C.M. Russell Museum mean a lot to Great Falls. If you want to engage your fellow neighbor, you can do it in the halls of our galleries, whether it be at a member opening for an exhibition, an event like the auction. Um, you can just find community here. The Art and Soul campaign has the potential of transforming the entire C.M. Russell Museum. It became clear to me that the opportunity we had with the Art and Soul campaign was to uh, put it on a sounder financial footing. It's so important that the museum have a, 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 a very significant endowment to ensure the sustainability of this story in the future generations and, what, what, and, and be able to see and witness what made America great. At the end of the day, the C.M. Russell Museum, 20 to 30 years from now, will be different, will be more vibrant, will be uh, more effective as a museum that talks about Russell and Western art because of this campaign. Thank you for joining us for this exciting announcement. And thank you to all of our friends who have provided generosity, momentum, and energy to the campaign to this point. We invite you to stand with us as together we stand with Charlie's legacy and raise $25 million by the end of 2022. As we sign off today, please enjoy The Gift by Ian Tyson. 
as performed by musician Bruce Amphenson. We thank you in anticipation of your support as together we ignite the art and soul of the American West. St. Louis, over in Missouri, the muddy Mississippi, well it rose and flows, the sun was born, to Mary Russell, the starts a legend, every cowboy knows, the young kid Russell, he was born to wonder, ever westward, he was born to roam. Just a kid of 16, back in 1880, out in wild Montana, he made his home. God made Montana, woo, for the wild man, the big and soon, the Cheyenne and the Crow. But he left his greatest gift for Charlie, he said to get her all down, cause she's bound to go. Judith Basin, God put the magic in young Russell's hands, and all was seen, and all was remembered, every shiny and mountain, every longhorn brand, Woo! he could paint the light, on horse hide shining, great passing herds of the buffalo, and a cow camp coat. On a rainy morning, the twist in the wrist of the Hooligan throw. God made Montana for the wild man, the big and Sioux, the Cheyenne and the Crow. But he left his greatest gift for Charlie. He said to get her all down, cause she found a good. home up yonder. He said, Kid Russell, I've got a job for you. You're in charge of sunsets out in old Montana, cause I can't paint them quite as good as you. No, I can't paint them quite as good as you. You're a pretty fair hand with your day breaks too. So God made my For Charlie, he said to get her all down, cause she's bound to go. Charlie, get her all down, you know she's bound to go. Come on and get her all down, you know she's bound to go.